It's wonderful to see all this water out there in Arizona. We have so little water, the trees chase the dogs. <laughs> and I've been asked to announce by the Arizona Chamber of Commerce the temperature in Phoenix is 85 degrees today. So, so look forward to seeing you all again next winter and you can come and visit us. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I also would like to ask your sympathy for the families of the state of Arizona. Because as you probably know, Barry Goldwater from Arizona ran for President of the United States. And Morris Udall from Arizona ran for President of the United States. And Bruce Babbitt from Arizona ran for President of the United States. And I from Arizona ran for President of the United States. Arizona may be the only state in America where mothers don't tell their children that someday they can grow up and be President of the United States. I'd like to thank you for your service to the Scouts. Uh, we all know that the predictors of success in life, one of those predictors is that people who have been members of Boy Scouts have a dramatically increased predictor of success in life. It's the most wonderful organization, I think, in America in a broad variety of ways. Uh, and one of the reasons why you're upset, obviously, is because you know they went to court to prevent the Boy Scouts from using a Department of Defense area that the Boy Scouts have been going to every four, four years, every four years for forever. The ACLU was able to get them uh, prevented. We are working on legislation to try to fix that, as you know. Uh, I think the way that we, the ACLU is, is entitled to do whatever they want to do within the law. We all, we all accept that. The key to it is that you have judges who are appointed who strictly interpret the Constitution of the United States. That's the key to beating back these assaults by the ACLU on the Boy Scouts of America. And that is critical. And the critical aspect of the President of the United States is the appointment of lifetime judges. And those judges who are appointed, in my view, must be those who strictly interpret the Constitution of the United States and do not legislate from the bench. Every time. Every time we, I didn't think that ethanol made a lot of sense when oil was $10 a barrel. I didn't think that ethanol made a lot of sense when we were not so dependent on foreign oil. We are, if you look around the world, my friends, and see the area places where we get our oil, beginning with this crazy guy down in Venezuela named Chavez, then our, we are vulnerable. We are vulnerable to a cutoff of some kind of uh, of oil, and we, and one of our compelling arguments, which could go hand in hand with addressing greenhouse gas emissions, is independence of, of foreign oil. And we've got to work towards that goal. Um, is there any way that we can see an end to Iraq? Yeah, yeah, there certainly is. If we are able to support this uh, new strategy, which calls for additional troops and a new strategy. It's the way we do business, and we are seeing a few signs of progress, and if we do, then we will be able to have the Iraqi government function, the Iraqi military take over our responsibilities, and we gradually reduce our presence. I think most people uh, understand why I think it's important that we have ethanol, and it's, uh, it reduces our dependence on foreign oil and it's, uh, it's a very important contributor to uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. I don't support most subsidies, so I, uh, I hope many people I talk to understand that.